Too many great musicians took their final bow in 2023. Whether they were icons on the world stage or beloved in their home countries, these are the artists we'll always remember. There have been few bands in the history of rock as weird as the San Antonio outfit Butthole Surfers. Bursting onto the scene in the early 80s, the band built their reputation through their chaotic live shows and genre-defining style. They seemed designed for cult stardom only, but the band improbably achieved commercial success in the 90s. Throughout their history, the band's often fluid lineup included four mainstays, singer Gibby Haynes, guitarist Paul Leary, and drummers King Coffey and Teresa Taylor, also known as Teresa Nervosa. In 1990, Taylor further etched herself into the pages of Gen X lore with a role in Richard Linklater's Slacker. It's a Madonna pap smear. A longtime smoker, Taylor had for some time been battling an undisclosed lung condition, and on June 19th, the band announced on social media that she had passed away the previous Sunday at the age of 60. The great Tony Bennett may have launched himself to fame with I Left My Heart in San Francisco, but the man embodied the spirit of his hometown New York City. Bennett benefited early in his career from the friendship of Frank Sinatra, one of the many artists whom Bennett has duetted with over a career spanning over seven decades. But despite the similarities between the two, Bennett always forged his own path. Bennett's legend only seemed to grow as he aged, thanks in part to a 1994 MTV Unplugged special and accompanying album that introduced a new generation to his talents, and the 2014 album Cheek to Cheek, an unlikely but inspired collaboration with Lady Gaga. Despite a 2016 Alzheimer's diagnosis, Bennett continued to record and perform over the following five years. Bennett passed away in the Big Apple on July 21st at the age of 96, inspiring a worldwide tidal wave of tributes from fellow musicians and celebrities, including Elton John and Lady Gaga. On the occasion of what would have been his 97th birthday on August 3rd, Gaga wrote on Instagram, I'll be celebrating you a lot more than once a year. I'll celebrate you every time I'm on stage singing jazz music. Every time I walk down the streets of New York, I'll look around and remember all you did for the city and the whole world. Irish singer Sinead O'Connor first came to the music world's attention via her 1987 debut LP, The Lion and the Cobra, which peaked at number 36 on the Billboard chart. While it lacked a hit single, there was no denying the power of her voice and the potency of her songwriting. It seemed like only a matter of time before she broke through to major stardom, and her 1990 release, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got, did that trick, thanks to the lead single, Nothing Compares to You, which rocketed to number one on the pop chart. In later years, O'Connor became perhaps more well-known for her activism than for her music, particularly her legendary appearance on Saturday Night Live in 1992, when she ripped up a picture of Pope John Paul II. Fight the real enemy! While she was uncompromising in her beliefs and unwavering in her dedication to her craft, O'Connor was famously troubled in recent years and suffered the devastating loss of her 17-year-old son in 2022. On July 26th, O'Connor's family announced in a statement that she had passed away of an undisclosed cause. She was 56 years old. Even though the Eagles lineup changed over the years, it has always been a band populated with gifted musicians. But while many of those members basked in the fame, original bassist Randy Meisner was always content to stay out of the spotlight. Meisner also sang lead on some songs, including one of the Eagles' best-known tunes, Take It to the Limit. Unfortunately, it was partly due to Meisner's reluctance to constantly perform the song live that led to his departure from the band in 1977. He enjoyed a reasonably successful solo career in the early 80s before largely checking out of the music industry, although he joined his Eagles bandmates at their 1998 Rock Hall of Fame induction. On July 26, Meisner passed away from complications brought on by chronic pulmonary respiratory disease at the age of 77. In a statement on their website, the band wrote, Randy was an integral part of the Eagles and instrumental in the early success of the band. His vocal range was astonishing. Virginia producer Timbaland has produced pop tunes for some of the biggest stars on the planet, but when he was up and coming in the mid-90s, his career really began to take off when he formed a duo with Melvin Magoo Barcliff. Their 1997 LP, Welcome to Our World, spawned the number 12 hit Up Jumps to Boogie and went platinum, and two more successful releases followed, Indecent Proposal in 2001 and Under Construction Part 2 in 2003. Magoo's output dwindled in the latter half of the double aughts, and while he essentially retired after that decade, his contribution to hip-hop can't be denied. On August 13th, Magoo died from undisclosed causes at the age of 50. On Instagram, Timbaland wrote, This one hits different. Tim and Magoo forever. Rest easy, my king. Toronto native Robbie Robertson began his music career with the band The Hawks. Formed to provide backup for rockabilly singer Ronnie Hawkins, they soon moved on to a slightly more high-profile gig with folk superstar Bob Dylan. The band didn't stay in the shadow of Dylan for long, however. The outfit renamed themselves The Band and released their inaugural LP, 1968's Music from the Big Pink. While they never sold truckloads of records, the band cultivated a loyal following. When the band broke up in the mid-70s, they did so in style. 
1976 farewell concert was filmed by a young Martin Scorsese and released in 1978 as The Last Waltz, widely considered to be among the greatest concert films of all time. Robertson would go on to collaborate with Scorsese for the rest of his life, working on the scores for such classics as Casino, The Gangs of New York, and The Wolf of Wall Street. And finally he called me every time Maestro, and now people think it's some pretentious thing like Maestro. No, it came from Robbie. It's just him <laughs> making fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> Robertson also continued to release music both as a solo artist and with the band, who reformed in 1993. Robertson passed away on August 9th at the age of 80 after a protracted illness. His final work with Scorsese can be heard in 2023's Killers of the Flower Moon. Jimmy Buffett was a gifted singer and songwriter with an affinity for mashing up musical styles, but he certainly had his preference. Rocking Island music of the sort that could transport fans away to the tropical locales that he was unabashedly in love with. Buffett released over two dozen studio albums in his storied career, including a whopping 17 that went either gold or platinum, and attracted a joyful legion of Parrothead fans from all walks of life. You'd see people coming from work, taking their ties off and putting their Hawaiian shirts over their, uh, over their suits. Buffett passed away on September 1st at the age of 76 after battling a rare form of skin cancer for half a decade. While he lived to a ripe old age and left behind an immortal musical legacy, Parrotheads were still sad to see him go. In an op-ed penned for Florida Keys News, his sister Lucy Buffett related that her brother had died comfortably surrounded by things he loved, family, dogs, music, and the ocean. She wrote, He had my grandfather's twinkle in his eye to the end, and he was very clear that the music, the party, and the good life was to continue with his robust optimism in tow. He didn't care about resting in peace. The last words he whispered to me were, Have fun. It's pretty much impossible to be indifferent to veteran rockers Smash Mouth. You may love them or you may hate them, but you know their songs. This is thanks in large part to lead singer Steve Harwell, who led the band from its inception in 1994 to his retirement in 2021. With monster hit singles like All Star, Walking on the Sun, and the Monkees cover I'm a Believer, Smash Mouth moved over 6 million records during the course of their career, and Harwell's larger-than-life vocal and stage presence were the band's secret sauce. His retirement came due to problems with his health, and in a statement at that time, he called himself fortunate to live out that dream of being a rock star. Unfortunately, Harwell was never able to resolve his medical issues, and he passed away on September 4th after suffering liver failure. He was 56. In a statement to Rolling Stone, Smash Mouth manager Robert Hayes said, Steve Harwell was a true American original, a larger-than-life character who shot up into the sky like a Roman candle. His only tools were his irrepressible charm and charisma, his fearlessly reckless ambition, and his king-size cojones. Steve lived a 100% full-throttle life. He loved people. He... I mean, he always was laughing and jumping around. Singer, songwriter, and keyboardist Gary Wright would have etched out an impressive musical legacy even if he had never attempted a solo career. After a stint playing keys and writing tunes for the 70s rock band Spooky Tooth, he went on to play on George Harrison's iconic solo release, All Things Must Pass. He also appeared on recordings by the likes of B.B. King, Harry Nielsen, and Ringo Starr, while occasionally releasing solo LPs. In 1975, though, he broke through in a big way with the Dreamweaver, an LP crafted with a heavy dose of synthesizers that went platinum and produced two giant hit singles. One of those hits was, of course, the title track, which hit number two on the pop chart, propelling the lead single Love is Alive onto the charts. Thanks to his close friendship with Harrison, he lived a life dedicated to Eastern philosophy and meditation. Wright passed away on September 4th at the age of 80. Born in Houston and raised in the tiny Texas town of Bandera, Charlie Robison dropped his first album, Bandera, in 1995. Influenced equally by Texas honky-tonk and rock, it was moderately well-received. But it was his 1998 sophomore effort, Life of the Party, that was his breakthrough, with hits like My Hometown and Loving Country. His first major label recording, Step Right Up, followed in 2001, spawning the number 35 hit I Want You Bad and ushering his talent into the national spotlight. Robinson continued to record and perform, releasing his final LP, High Life, in 2013. But he soon developed health issues, which took a serious turn in 2018. That year, he announced to fans that he would be forced to retire from music after a throat procedure had left him permanently unable to sing. He wrote in a Facebook post at the time, It's been an amazing ride, and I cannot tell you all what the last 25 years has meant to me. I was looking forward to another 25, but as I say, it happens. Unfortunately, Robison passed away on September 10th at the age of 59. AP reported that the singer had died from cardiac arrest and other complications. Composed of Camila Williams and sisters Lamisha and Irish Grinstead, girl group 702 made a splash on the charts in the late 90s. The group fielded two top 10 singles, 1997's Get It Together and 1999's Where My Girls At, and their 1999 self-titled sophomore LP was a top 40 success. It's really now just, let's just have fun, let's do this for the fans, right. and let's just, yeah, that's it. 
The girls began a reunion tour in 2018, and in 2021, the Grinstead sisters took part in the reality series BET Presents The Encore, which challenged a slew of female 80s and 90s R&B stars to record an album as a supergroup in just 30 days. Behind the scenes, though, Irish Grinstead was apparently dealing with some major health issues. In late 2022, 702 announced via social media that she would be taking a medical leave of absence from the group, one from which she unfortunately would not return. On September 16, 2023, Lamisha Grinstead offered fans on Instagram a heartbreaking update, writing, It is with great sadness that I have to let you know that my beautiful sister and friend has passed away this evening, she wrote. She has had a long battle and she is finally at peace. The specific cause of death was not provided. Irish was 43. For over five decades and multiple generations, the Isley brothers have proven to be staggeringly influential to R&B. The group was founded in the early 50s by siblings Ronald, O'Kelly, Vernon, and Rudolf Isley, who became a trio after Vernon's untimely death in 1955. The Isleys remained relevant through constant reinvention. From R&B to soul to funk, the brothers kept finding ways to score with listeners until O'Kelly's death from a heart attack in 1986. Rudolph himself departed in 1989 to become a Baptist minister, paving the way for younger brothers Ernie and Marvin to step into the spotlight. Rudolph appeared on stage only sporadically after that, although he did attend when the Isleys were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1992. Rudolph Isley passed away on October 11th at the age of 84. Producer and DJ Mark the 45 King James came by that moniker due to his tendency to mine old, little-known 45 records for his samples, creating a chunky, often horn-laden sound that was quite distinctive in rap's early golden age. In 1998, he produced the title track to Jay-Z's six-times platinum album Hard Knock Life. He's actually a genius in that way. And in 2000, he made brilliant use of a sampled refrain from English singer Dido to serve up perhaps his greatest achievement as a producer, Stan, the iconic single from Eminem's The Marshall Mathers LP. James passed away from undisclosed causes on October 19th. Session drummer Aaron Spears always attributed much of his success to his chance discovery by Valdez Brantley, musical director for the iconic R&B artist Usher. Spears became a reliable piece of Usher's ensemble and co-produced tracks on his 2004 album Confessions, which scored him a Grammy nomination. After a breakthrough performance at the following year's Grammy ceremony, Spears was being sought for studio work by the likes of Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, Alicia Keys, and many more. Unfortunately, it seemed that Spears was just getting started when he passed away unexpectedly from undisclosed causes on October 30th. He was only 47. In an Instagram post, Usher paid a moving tribute to his friend, writing in part, I cry, tears of joy, looking back at all the memories we had together. I realize that you were the joy in every room you were in. Ex Japan is not quite a household name in the US, but in a fair universe, they would be. Since their beginnings as a speed metal band in the 80s, their music has come to embrace pop, symphonic, and even classical elements. They've sold a whopping 30 million records worldwide, and on October 29th, they were struck with tragedy when bassist Heath, real name Hiroshi Mori, passed away from cancer at 55 years of age after being diagnosed earlier this year. Heath had been with the band since 1992, and in a heart-wrenching statement posted to Instagram, band leader Yoshiki Hayashi expressed his gratitude at having grown closer with the bassist over the last several years. He was such a wonderful bass player, a band member, and a wonderful human being. I'm so mentally and physically drained, so drenched in sorrow. I don't know what to say right now. Thank you for everything, Heath, and may you rest in peace. I hope that someday we can play music together again. Drummer George Brown, for his entire professional career, was nicknamed Funky, and as a founding member of R&B and funk icons Cool in the Gang, he more than lived up to the name. Brown stayed with the band for decades. His driving, swaggering rhythms powered all of the outfit's classic tracks, from Jungle Boogie to Open Sesame to Celebration. And he also has the distinction of being one of the most sampled drummers of all time. Cool in the Gang's 1974 track Summer Madness alone has been sampled over 200 times. Brown was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2021, and while he was able to beat it into remission, it returned in 2023. It was bad for me, uh, the, uh, because it, it, it wasn't working. Brown passed away on November 16th in Long Beach, California. He was 74 years old. Mars Williams is best known as a longtime saxophone player for the English new wave outfit Psychedelic Furs. Williams debuted on the Furs' 1984 breakthrough LP Mirror Moves, and he remained with the band for their duration, last appearing on their 2020 comeback LP Made of Rain. But Williams was nothing if not a prolific sax man. Over the years, he's worked with Billy Idol, Kesha, and Pressure Machine by The Killers, to name a few. Williams was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in 2022, and in 2023, it became apparent that he was running out of treatment options. Knowing that the end was near, Williams rejoined the Furs for an extensive North American tour, which ran for over two dozen dates in September and October. 
He performed his final show on October 14th and passed away on November 20th. On the GoFundMe page created to pay for his cancer treatments, his family wrote, Those last performances with the psychedelic furs will live on with all the other incredible contributions that Mars has made as a person and as a musician, and that boundless energy will continue to inspire. New Orleans R&B singer Jean Knight was working as a baker's assistant in the late 60s and early 70s when she showed up for a session in Jackson, Mississippi with producer Wardell Quisere. As Knight told the story at a festival in 2007, the song she had been given to record had a melody that just wasn't quite upbeat enough for her, so one of the songwriters gave her permission to put her own stamp on it. The result would become the only major hit of Knight's career, but what a hit it was. Mr. Big Stuff, which rocketed to the top of the R&B charts and went to number two on the Hot 100. The song pretty much took care of paying Knight's bills for the rest of her life. It also helped line the pockets of the many artists who have sampled it, including Heavy D and the Beastie Boys, to name a few. Knight was known to take the stage well into her later years, always performing her signature tune. Tragically, she passed away on November 22nd at the age of 80. Formed in 1978 by drummer Paul Ferguson and vocalist Jazz Coleman, Killing Joke was a band whose sound was tough to pin down. Rounded out by bassist Martin Glover Youth and guitarist Kevin Jordy Walker, the band played heavy rock with a punk attitude and a danceable sensibility. Throughout their long career, they were known nearly as well for the controversial imagery of their album artwork as for the sound, a sound that, ever evolving, was driven largely by the unconventional textured guitar work of Walker. Coleman once recalled that hearing Walker play for the first time was like a fire from heaven, and that is as good a description as any for his style. He's been cited as an influence by the likes of Metallica, The Charlatans, and My Bloody Valentine and has also been acknowledged as having a formative influence on entire genres as varied as industrial and shoegaze. On November 27th, Killing Joke released a statement announcing that Walker had passed away the day prior after suffering a stroke. He was only 64. Bands like Flogging Molly and Dropkick Murphys may never have come into being without the Pogues. The band was formed in 1982 by vocalist Shane McGowan and Spider Stacy. In the 80s, a band associated themselves with all manner of fellow iconoclasts, playing with the Dubliners, The Clash, and even opening for Bob Dylan. McGowan was not the only one to provide lead vocals for the band, but he was perhaps the most distinctive. The Pogues never ruled the Billboard charts, but their influence was towering, and the entirety of the Celtic punk genre owes a debt of gratitude to McGowan, who deserves a large share of the credit for creating it. Yeah, I, mean, I don't like the Pogues. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll th yes, I think I've written a lot of good songs, yeah. McGowan had been ill in recent years, and on November 30th, his wife Victoria Clark announced his passing on Instagram, writing in part, Thank you for your presence in this world. You made it so very bright, and you gave so much joy to so many people with your heart and soul and your music. You will live in my heart forever. Drummer Colin Burgess didn't end up with ACDC by accident. He was a member of the Masters Apprentices, one of Australia's premier hard rock bands of the 60s, before briefly joining the freshly minted ACDC in 1973. With his former band, Burgess enjoyed success in his native Australia, but the early departure of songwriter and guitarist Mick Bauer portended a tough run plagued by personnel troubles, and the band called it quits in 1972. Malcolm and Angus Young quickly tapped Burgess to join their new project, and with singer Dale Evans, the band recorded Can I Sit Next to You Girl, which became a minor hit in Australia. But Burgess was fired after showing up inebriated to a live performance. In 1998, Burgess was inducted into the Australian Recording Industry Association Hall of Fame. Burgess died on December 16, 2023 at the age of 77. His former ACDC bandmates eulogized him in an Instagram post which read, very sad to hear the passing of Colin Burgess. He was our first drummer and a very respected musician. Happy memories. Rock and peace, Colin. In the early 90s, the Dixie Chicks, now simply known as the Chicks, had a lineup that looked quite a bit different. The original band consisted of Marty and Emily McGuire, guitarist Robin Lynn Macy, and Laura Lynch, who gave the Chicks sound an old-timey low end with her upright bass. The lineup released two albums before Macy departed, and Lynch took over lead vocals for their third release, Shouldn't Have Told You That, which saw them achieve some success. Soon after, though, the sisters decided to replace Lynch with young vocalist Natalie Maines, and this lineup would go on to stellar success in the late 90s and beyond. After her departure, Lynch moved to the tiny town of Mineral Wells, Texas, and lived a quiet, small-town life. She died on December 22nd when her pickup truck was struck head-on. She was 65. 2023 also saw the passing of soul singer Vicky Anderson, original Journey guitarist George Tickner, folk legend Sixto Rodriguez, pavement drummer Gary Young, vocalist Terry Kirkman, country star Buck Trent, and rapper Arnez Blount, who performed as C-Night. They will be missed, but their legacy will live on through their music. <laughs>